the Earth and Celestial Coordinate System and the view from the Two Minute Star Finder. This is the Earth Coordinate System. We're looking at the North Pole and we're looking at the North Hemisphere, the entire North Hemisphere when we go from one green line to the other. From 12 o'clock to zero splits the Earth in half as far as the polar system where we have a west hemisphere and an east hemisphere. The green circle is zero latitude. So our coordinate system has a latitude and a longitude. The longitude starts over at zero through Greenwich, England. And in degrees travels 180 degrees on the west side and also 180 degrees on the east side. So now we can select a latitude in this direction towards north or we can select the longitude in this direction for the Western Hemisphere and this direction for the Eastern Hemisphere. So I want to describe a place on Earth and this place will be Newport, Rhode Island and I can describe it by a latitude and a longitude. First, the latitude. On the top here, we have the North Pole. We also have, on this horizon system, this grid, the various latitudes. We have pinpointed through the North Pole at 41 degrees north. As far as longitude, we're at 71. So we can go from zero to 71 longitude. The cross in the center of this grid is our position. The grid that you're going to find out later is your horizon. That means what you see if you were at sea, the horizon around you and by bearings and the height by degrees to over your head or your zenith. So that then is our setup for the Earth system. Latitude and longitude. Let's look at the celestial system. Very similar. Instead of having the equator being zero, called latitude, we call it declination. It's exactly the same thing. So this is the North Pole and this is declination. The declination is in degrees and once again this would be 41 degrees declination north. So if a star were to be over our head directly it would have a declination of 41 just like we would have a latitude of 41. And if it were over our head, instead of having longitude, we'd have what is called the Greenwich Hour Angle. 
The Greenwich-Hour angle can be explained by saying from the same origin of Greenwich, westward only, instead of east and west like, like um, our Earth system, it's westward only through 360 degrees. So if a star were at 41 declination north and 71 GHA, it would be directly over our head. So instead of longitude, this then would be Greenwich Hour Angle through 360 degrees. So this gives us a coordinate system where we can find where we are on Earth, where a star is in the sky, and we can work these systems on the two-minute star finder to solve problems, celestial problems. Now this is a picture of the two-minute star finder. It's the same picture we used for finding latitude, longitude, declination, and GHA, or Greenwich Hour Angle. So what we do here, using the same information, we first place the horizon disk. Now this is the horizon disk, the, this web's shape. We need to place it where we are on Earth, using the Earth coordinate system of latitude and longitude. We use a disk that is for 45 north. What we, we run a pin through the piece of disk at 41 north. This gives us more accuracy. But the shape for 45 north is the shape you're looking at. Now, we then move the 0 to 180 line towards the longitude of our Earth, which is Newport, Rhode Island, 71. So this cross is over our head directly. And we have finished entirely with the horizon disk. We could tape it down so that it doesn't move. We have to now place the star disk. Now these stars are moving around in our sky, but we have to pick the correct place for us to see the stars at their bearing and their altitude at the time we desire to see them. So here is how we work that problem. We first decide what month we're going to use. In this case, let's say September. We also have to decide what day. Okay, we're going to go for September the 5th. So each degree is equal to one degree. So therefore, five degrees would be September the 5th. Now this is a place on this disk that we hope to um, keep and to use. So if we read the time scale, you can see 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and 11 o'clock happens to be right on September the 5th. If it were the 6th, it would be 1104 because each one of those degrees are equal to four minutes. It's a time and arc situation. So we write down our 1100. We're going to use that place. That place is actually midnight on 
September the 5th. But we're going to add a time to it, a Greenwich Mean Time, that we desire to go out and observe stars. And we decided that we want to add the observed time at 10.08. So we simply add them together. 1100 and 10.08 is 2108. Now, Aries is a place on the disk that controls all the stars. If Aries moves, the star moves in unison because it's on the disk printed. There's a zero line running from north through Aries. All the stars are measured from that line in this direction and declination-wise in this direction. We'll get into that later. But now we want to just set the disk up. So we move Aries, which is the star disk, the ram's head, to 2108. So 08 would simply be 4 minutes for each degree, 2 degrees. So everything is set up. Our position, our sky is set up, the stars are set up, and we can now read off in terms of altitude and bearing any of these stars. For an example, Cirrus is 140 with a height of 24 degrees. Let me home in on that a little closer. So that takes care of Cirrus. Uh, Cirrus, 140 with a height of 24. This is the height and this is the bearing. The next one, Regal, is 163 with a height of 39. 160 plus a little bit over 3 and a height of 39. There's the height, 30. Pollux. This is that star in that position. Is 090 with a height of 46. Now we could pick all these stars in the sky. We could have put planets on and picked the planets at the same time. But right now we have no planets on the star disk. So this is the two minute star finder and that's the horizon system, the celestial system, coordinate system, and the two-minute star finder finding stars. Thank you.